Hello and welcome to round two of the Turn 7 Racing Championship. Here we are today at Twin Ring Motegi. It's a cool September morning here down on the track. Once qualifying was over, it turned out to be Dylan Madeline, Chris McDuff, Matt Menestia and AJ Southgate filling up those first two rows 28 cars in total waiting for that green flag to start waving and despite the tricky sections this track has to offer lap one was mostly filled with just drivers finding their natural place in the race no major incidents unless your name was simon ball who had a heartbreaking moment as he spun the car on lap one going from his qualifying position of P15 down to P28 as lap 5 rolled around the drivers were starting to settle in the leaders more or less remained the leaders with AJ Southgate in P2 Chris McDuff in P3 Matt Menestia in P4 Madeline remaining there on the front You know, Penagre and evaluation racer James McCritchie were engaged in a tight battle. But coming into turn five on lap five, evaluation racers Jamie Jenkins, Ala Philippe Pierre Etienne, along with amateur driver Ian McDuff, came together, resulting in damage to Pierre Etienne's car, forcing him to make an early pit stop. Over the next few laps, Jenkins attempted to make up the lost positions. He did gain a number of spots before he spun the car and decided to retire. AJ Southgate pushed forward moving into P2 began what would become a long battle with Dylan Madeline which McDuff just behind them waiting to see what the results of that fight would be the pro-ams were being led by Linda Froelich but in P2 and P3 in the pro -Am class was still a battle hotly contested between Ola Sankvist and Euro Forsblum. Although some people had pitted very early due to damage and such, the main pit phase began about 30 minutes into the race as McCritchie and McKechnie took the opportunity to come in. This pit phase lasted about 15 minutes as the different strategies began and by the end of lap 20 McDuff had come in from third position while the battle between Southgate and Madeline continued to rage ahead of him. Most drivers opted to come into the pits at the end of lap 22 and lap 23. Some stayed out for one more lap, and that included AJ Southgate, 
Once the pit phase ended however, Madeline retained the P1 spot having gained a few tenths of a second on Southgate through the pit phases. McDuff, who had taken a spin into the T1, T2 section a few laps earlier, was now in P4 by lap 25 with Rob Taylor taking over his P3 spot. Matt Menestia was doing what he could to catch up with McDuff. Other battles on the track at this point included Nigel Stock and Nelson Samoas. and Ian McDuff and Mark Kiko. Leading for the Pro-Ams, Nindet Fröhlich found himself in a bubble. And it was Evo Forsblum in P2 and Nelson Samoas in P3. Ola Sankovist having dropped down the field considerably after taking tyres on his first pit stop. Ian McDuff, leading for the amateurs, was chasing down Pro-Am driver Mark Kiko when a bump on the noggin with a family member meant both Chris McDuff and Ian McDuff had to suddenly retire their cars. As we entered into the final 15 minutes, most drivers were staring at their fuel gauges, trying to work out when they'd have to make their final stop. A few drivers had already taken it though, Rob Taylor, James McCritchie, Pierre Etienne, Simon Ball and Alan Merlis among them. Others who pitted as late as lap 24 were winning those calculations to see if they could skip that last pit stop altogether. Madeline and Southgate stayed battling. Their pit stops being a lap apart make a difference to this race. On lap 43, AJ made his move, got himself into P1 when the rest of the field spread out quite widely at this stage. Taylor and Vinagre were close, with different pit strategies, they weren't really battling. Likewise, McCritchie and Kiko were close, but McCritchie had already had his final stop. The last few minutes would see these pit strategies converge on the answers that we had been waiting on. But by the end of lap 43, Dylan had regained the P1 position. Madeline came into the pits on lap 46, his time in the pit lane coming to 31.98 seconds. And AJ Southgate came in on lap 48, his pit lane time 30. 0.18 seconds, getting ahead of Madeline by just a few meters on exit, coming into the last lap of the race. Matt Menestier held the final podium step in the palm of his hand, but Moss Lang, an evaluation racer, and Rob Taylor weren't too far back and it would only take a small mistake from Matt Monestier to have that position taken away from him. Tomislav Kodak stayed out hoping to get to the end without one last stop. Others trying that tactic included Debats, Stock and Bruno Albino. The final chapter of the race then, Froelich still held his position as leader of the Pro-Ams, almost 10 seconds ahead of the Barats. Euro Forsbloom uh, was in third. Nigel Stock's fuel strategy looked to be working out for him as he led the amateurs race, 
coming in to the last lap though Pico and Pierre Etienne were just behind him. Coming across the line with the white flag waving, De Vaart had to make his stop, putting Ewa Forsbloom onto the second step and Nelson Samoa's onto the third for the Pro-Ams, but all eyes were fixed firmly upon the leaders as they finish us out. And so it was AJ Southgate who secured the win at Twin Ring Motegi for the Turn 7 Racing Round 2 GT3 Championship here. Dylan Madeline in P2, Matt Menestier P3, Ross Lang in P4, Rob Taylor in P5. Hodak's strategy worked out for him. He got himself a P6.